Take your Bibles this morning. We'll start in the book of Romans. Romans chapter number 6. Uh, the title of my message today is, Have You Been Vaccinated? Have You Been Vaccinated? Uh, vaccinations have been a hot topic recently. The, the anti-vaxxers are all over social media spouting uh, about all, all the, uh, the supposed side effects and everything that there are to do with, with vaccinations and, and, and things, all the stuff that they, uh, the things that they cause and everything. Uh, if you've ever been watching TV, I, I know you're independent Baptists, you don't watch TV. Maybe you've heard of somebody else who's been watching TV at some point. And uh, uh, a commercial comes on and it's about some medication, right? And, and, and then at the end of the, uh, the, the commercial, whatever, it, it tells you about all the side effects for that particular medicine. It, it's like it'll be, it'll be an advertisement for a, a, a depression medication or something. One of the side effects is it might make you depressed. It's like, what in the world? Why, why would somebody take this stuff and, and all that kind of a thing? I mean, it's just like 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 the side effects just so far outweigh. You know what? Uh, we might be able to cure your constipation, uh, but uh, it, it could kill you. Right? I think I think I think I'll just uh, get some other useful or something. Thanks thanks for your advice. Right? Uh, all these medications they, they they do all that kind of stuff and, 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 and vaccinations in particular they put all kinds of junk in them and stuff that, that, that that's, that's that's really crazy wild stuff. Now I'm not I'm not sitting here today to tell you whether you should or whether you should vaccinate your kids and and all that that, that kind of thing. That that's a decision between you and the Lord. Figure out what it is that you want to do. I, I would tell you that in the state of Indiana it's pretty much required. If they're going to go to public school, they have to have a big list of stuff that they have to that they have to have, and, and things like that. It's it's not really uh, an option. There is such a thing as a uh, religious exemption that you can get. Uh, about 47 or 48 states across the United States, you can do that if you can prove uh, that uh, it's really against your your uh, your religious beliefs uh, uh, to to do that or to participate in that. Then then you can kind of get an exception from that. Uh, I, I guess they're kind of going through trying to get rid of that right now as well. Uh, but that's not really what I, I want to talk to you about, though, today. I, I just uh, I want to talk to you uh, uh, today about some vaccinations that as a Christian that, that you need. Okay? Um, uh, the, uh, the, the place that we want to start here is in Romans chapter 6. But, but really, I'm going to talk to you about, about three vaccinations that every Christian should get. And uh, uh, they're, they're not, you know, I'm not talking about polio and the, the mumps or measles or smallpox or, or, or whatever. Um, but, uh, but, but, but rather some things that as a Christian, some things that you need to be inoculated from. Okay. Romans chapter 6, uh, we'll read verses 1 through 10. And uh, uh, then, then we'll pray here. Apostle Paul is writing here. He says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism unto death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is free, is free from sin. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him knowing that Christ being raised from the dead died no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. Amen. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Amen. And so shall we. Let's pray. Holy like, Father, Lord, we do thank you for this day that you've given us, Lord, this opportunity to gather together and open up your word. Lord, I pray that you would just show us, Lord, as we, as we look at your scriptures here today, uh, some things that we need to be inoculated from, Lord, and and some things that we need to, to pay attention to. Lord, make sure that uh, uh, we are living lives that are, that are pleasing to you. 
Uh, we, we just pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Uh, so, so like I said, uh, we're going to look at three vaccinations that you need. Three vaccinations that you need. Uh, the first uh, thing that you need to va be vaccinated against, you need to uh, be vaccinated against unholiness. Uh, if you look over in 1 Peter at chapter number 1, uh, uh, you're going to see here that uh, we are called to be holy. We're called to be holy. Uh, we, we need to be vaccinated uh, of, against being unholy. And as a Christian, then you have the ability uh, to live unholy if, if you so choose. Uh, but we need to be vaccinated from that. We, we need to, to strive uh, to, to live holy lives. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse number 16, Peter says, Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. The, the Lord is calling you to be holy today. The Lord is calling you to distance yourself from the ways and the values of the world. Uh, look with me over in Ephesians, Ephesians in chapter number 4. And uh, we need to distance ourselves away from, from the way that the world uh, responds to things, the way that the, the world uh, values things. And, and our values ought to be different. Uh, our val values need to go along the lines of being holy and uh, doing the things that are going to be pleasing to the Lord. And uh, uh, we have to be in this world. This is where the Lord has placed us. And He's put us wherever it is that He's put us. He put us in this country where we're free uh, to gather together. We're, we're, we're free to, uh, to worship Him and uh, uh, all, all, those, all, all those benefits that we have for being here. Uh, but we don't we don't need to be conformed uh, to the world. Uh, the things that they care about, the things that they love, the things that they're going after ought not to be the things that we are. And uh, we're, we're supposed to be separate. And we're supposed to be holy unto the Lord. Ephesians chapter four here, first starting in verse number twenty one. He says, "If so be that ye have heard him." And have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. That you put off concerning the former conversation of the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Uh, we, we, are, we are to uh, put off the old man. Uh, we have two natures. Well, once you come to the same faith and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, you know you now have two natures. You have the old nature, and now you have the new nature. You, you have the Spirit of God residing with you, in you. He's made you a new creature, the Bible says. You have that new nature, but the thing is, is the new nature did not replace the old nature. The old nature is still there. The new nature didn't even overpower the old nature. It, 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 it's just residing right alongside with the old natures. So you literally have two natures that are completely running at 100% at all times within you. And we, we need to make the decision on a daily basis, like I said earlier, moment by moment, we need to make the decision as to which nature we're going to follow. Amen. Which nature are we going to let rule and reign within our lives? Apostle Paul said back there, Romans chapter 6, shall we continue in sin? Well, of course not. Of course not. Uh, you're still going to have to deal with sin. You're, you're still within the body of sin. And, and you're still going to have to deal with those things on a daily basis. And you're not going to bat a thousand. Nobody does. That's how the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. But, uh, but, but that doesn't mean that you're just to throw in the towel and give up and say, oh, well, I, you know, I can't be free. It, it's not a diet. That's what people people go on these diets, and you know they're all about you know the diet, and, and you know I'm not going to cheat on the diet, and I'm going to stick to this diet 100 percent, and all that stuff, and then one day some some happens or something leads into another thing or whatever, and then you end up cheating on your diet, and then they just sort of oh well I cheated now I'm done, I guess I'm not on that diet anymore, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, uh, well, well, well smart people will start again tomorrow. Most people don't even do that. They're just like oh well. You know, uh, January is like the busiest uh, season for people to, to sign up for gym memberships. Everybody signs up for a gym membership, you know, because their New Year's resolution or whatever. And I'm going to exercise. And I'm going to go to the gym. And I'm going to do all this stuff. And, and, and they have a real boom in memberships 
and, and, and which is really good for the gyms because come about March, none of those people are there. And they don't have to do anything for the money that they they are continuously sucking out of your bank account. Right? Uh, because that's what people do. You know, they, they, they get going on something and, and then they, 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 okay, well, I didn't go one day. Okay, I didn't go two days. Oh, now it's been a week. And now, oh, well, I guess I won't go anymore. <laughs> and they give up. Right? Uh, the Christian life is in that way. You don't just give up. You don't throw in the towel. You don't like, well, I, I, I the body is sin and I can't help. I mean, I'm just, I'm, I, I, I'm predisposed to sinning, so I guess I won't even try anymore. No, no. Uh, you have to try. Amen. You have to be inoculated uh, from the, the, those things. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, the Apostle Paul says, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and temple unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be ye not conformed unto this world, but be ye renewed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. Amen. Don't be conformed to this world. The way that you're not conformed to this world is by paying attention to your mind. Your, your mind is important. The things that you think about, the things that you, you uh, concentrate on, the, the things that you put before your eyes that causes you to think about things, those things are important. Your mind is the battlefield. It's the battlefield where all this stuff takes place and, and it's where it, it, it all occurs at. Uh, look with me over at Colossians. Colossians chapter number 1. We'll look at a couple of passages here. Colossians 1, verses 21 and 22. Then we'll also look over here at Romans chapter 8 and verse number 7 in conjunction with this here. But Colossians chapter 1, verse 21. I start actually in verse 20. And the Apostle Paul is... Is talking to some Christians here, and he says, And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him, I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven, in you that were sometime alienated in enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and reprovable in his sight. Uh, in your natural state, uh, your your mind is an enemy of God. It, it's an enmity with God. It's against God. Your mind uh, doesn't want the things that it, want, that it should want. Right? You know your body doesn't want the things that it should want. Right? Uh, your body should want fruit and vegetables and spinach and Brussels sprouts and peas and I'm trying to think of another one of them disgusting green vegetables that I don't really want to eat. Uh, 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 that's what you need. You need those because they have all those vitamins and antioxidants and all the, all the stuff that they say that they have, right? It has all that stuff that you need, and that's what you should eat. And, and I've tried. I really have. I can eat, I can eat raw spinach. I can eat raw spinach. I can't eat cooked spinach. Any kind of greens, any of that stuff, uh, lettuce isn't supposed to be soggy unless it's soggy because of ranch dressing. If it's soggy because of ranch dressing, it's good. But if it's soggy because it's got, you know been, been been like boiled and, and waterlogged, and I can't do it. I, I just can't. My, my mother used to make us eat canned spinach. It's like you have to have. Well, I go, oh, wait, oh, oh, do I look like Popeye? I don't eat spinach. I don't eat canned spinach. I don't eat that stuff. Uh, I, I I can't do that, right? But I can eat I can eat raw spinach. I've got to a place where I can eat raw spinach. Um, if it's coarsely chopped, if it's too finely chopped, I can't. I still can't do that. Uh, but but I can do spinach. But 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 I try. I tried to eat Brussels sprouts. My dad, man, growing up, my dad loved Brussels sprouts, and I like cabbage. I think Brussels sprouts are basically like little bitty cabbages. I, I love ca I love cooked cabbage. I mean, give, give me some corned beef and cabbage any day of the week, man. I'm all about it. Uh, I, I love boiled cabbage. I know I just you know, but it doesn't really get soggy, you know, because it's, it's more more. It has more of a substance to it. It's more crisp or whatever. So it doesn't get soggy, so it, it, it passes my test. Okay. Uh, uh, but, but, but Brussels sprouts, I, I, I got all these cookbooks and all this stuff, and they say if you take Brussels sprouts and you grill them, like you cut them in half and you put them on the grill, they say that they taste like potatoes. You know what? They no, don't. No. I tried that. It'll work. It'll work. You know what your body wants? Your body wants a big 
<laughs> McDonald's or Chuck's. I mean, that's what your body wants. I, I mean, it's just like, like, I mean, come on. I could be doing as good as I could be doing on, on a diet, and you even drive past the McDonald's. You can smell the French fries. They were like, they're calling your name. They're like, Amen. <laughs> what? Right. Okay. It's like awful. And then after I do right and everything and all that stuff, my grandson is, I mean, I think the only thing he knows how to eat is McDonald's. And, uh, uh, you know, so, so he, he saw, oh, yeah, I'll be a good grand, grand, grandpa, you know, I'll, I'll, I'm not going to get anything. I'll get a salad. Right? I'll get a salad with grilled chicken and lots of ranch dressing. And, and, and all that stuff. And, you know, but we're in the car, we're driving back to the house, and I can smell that happy. <laughs> you know, I, I hear it. I'm here to tell you, that salad, it don't taste like french fries. <laughs> it don't even smell like french fries. The car now smells like french fries. But the salad, not so much. You want the things that you shouldn't want. That's what your mind, your mind wants the things that it shouldn't want. It, it, it's an enemy with God. Romans chapter 8, verse number 7 says, uh, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Uh, uh, we need to understand and realize that our minds are a battlefield. Your mind doesn't want the things that you want it to want. It wants all that other stuff. It wants to think about stuff that it shouldn't be thinking about. It wants to dwell on things that it shouldn't be dwelling on. It, it doesn't want, it doesn't lead you to holiness. If you just leave it alone and, and leave it be as it is and, 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 and be passive about your thought life, you're going to fail. You're going to fail at being inoc inoculated against unholiness uh, because it's going to lead you towards uh, uh, unholiness, not towards holiness. If you're passive about it, you can't be passive about your thought life. Look with me over in 2 Corinthians at chapter number 4. 2 Corinthians in chapter number 4. We're going to look at verse number 16 here. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Verse 16, he says, For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. You can't be passive. Uh, you have to be renewed day by day. Uh, you know one of the things that goes along with getting vaccinated is sometimes some of the vaccinations, especially if they're the ones that are against the really, really strong diseases and the really strong problems, is you have to get boosters. You have to go back and you got to get booster shots, and, and so so it can continue to renew that stuff within your within your system and stuff, and 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 that's what this is. You you need a booster shot to be vaccinated from a, a unholiness. Uh, you need to be renewed day by day. It's, it's something that you have to do. Every, you don't just do it one time. It's something you have to do continuously, all the time. Check the things that you're thinking about. Check the things that you're concentrating on. Look, the Bible says, as a man thinketh, so is he. It's uh, Proverbs 23 and verse 7. Uh, you are what you think. And the things that you allow your mind to think about, those are the things you're going to love. Even if you know those aren't the things that you're supposed to love. Uh, but that's all you're thinking about all the time. That's all you can ever think. That, all your desire goes towards that thing. Uh, you know that's true. You, you've had that happen before. You know, you've seen some kind of advertisement or something. You decided for whatever reason that you just had to have this trinket. Whatever the trinket is, it doesn't even matter. Right? Uh, when I was younger, it was like remote control cars. Right? They, they got these remote control cars that would go like 60 mile an hour. You know, we just had to have a remote control car. They could go 60 mile an hour. I, I, I don't know why, but it just had to happen. That's all I can think about. Worked all summer. Well, any job I could find, earned as much money as I could so I could buy this remote control car that goes 60 mile an hour. I don't think I, I, I purchased it. And I don't think I owned it for more than about 60 seconds. And I was thinking, man, I shouldn't have seen it. Right? But it's all I could think about. It's all, it is everything. My, my entire world revolved around this thing that I was thinking about. I just had to have that thing. And that's what your mind will do to you, no matter what it is. Uh, whatever it is. It can even be a good thing, but, but, but if you allow your mind just to concentrate on that one thing all the time and, and forget about everything else, then it turns into not being such a good thing. You can't let your mind have its own way. It has to be renewed every single day. 
You have to renew your mind. How do you renew your mind? You renew your mind by spending time in God's Word. Uh, you want to have the thoughts of God. You want to have His thoughts. You want to get to know Him. Uh, we don't just read the Bible so that we can say that we read the Bible. We don't read the Bible just so that we can learn a bunch of facts about the Bible, although it's good to know some facts about the Bible. Amen. Right? Uh, the Bible says that uh, uh, you're supposed to study the Bible and show yourself approved unto God, right? Uh, so that you don't have to be ashamed. Uh, the Bible is it is uh, profitable for doctrine, reproof, for correction, for instruction, righteousness, and all those. But but we want to read the Bible for all those reasons. But we also want to read the Bible because we want to get to know the Lord. Amen. We want to get to a place where we're thinking like the Lord thinks. We want to have His thoughts. He tells us. <coughs> Excuse me. He tells us that his thoughts, our thoughts aren't his thoughts, and his thoughts aren't our thoughts, and his thoughts are higher than our thoughts, and all, all those things. But it doesn't have to be that way. It doesn't have to be that way. Uh, we can spend more time in his word. We can renew our minds, and we, we, we can train our minds to, to be more like him. We're never gonna, we're never gonna attain that perfection, right? I'm not saying that. Uh, his thoughts are always going to be higher than our thoughts, right? He, uh, he understands how things work better than we're ever going to understand. He's going to show us a lot of things once we get up to glory. Uh, the Bible says that right now we look through a, a, a glass darkly, but but he's going to he's going to clean that glass up and he's going to let us see things the way that they really are uh, to their point. But but there's still going to be things that we're not we're not going to be able to understand and we're not going to be able to comprehend. Right? But, but, but you're going to be much better off if you'll actually spend some time in His Word. If you'll spend time renewing your mind and don't just be passive and let your mind think about whatever it wants to think about. Uh, everybody wants to throw their hands up in the air and act like they don't have a choice. But it's not my fault. I can't help it. I was driving down the road and I saw that. And now I'm thinking about it. Okay, well, well stop yourself and check yourself. Amen? Uh, that's one of the reasons that we commit Scripture to memory. So you, you can, hey, look, if you find yourself thinking about the wrong thing, just start reciting some, some scriptures to yourself. Uh, we don't uh, learn, learn how to, how to uh, memorize uh, scriptures just so that we can go around and act like we're a big shot and look at all the scriptures I have memorized. Right? That doesn't do you any good. Uh, you do it so, look, the Bible says, I, word have I hid in my heart. Why? That I might not sin against thee. Yeah. That's why we hide His Word in our heart. But He doesn't say it. Thy Word have I hid in my heart so that I can uh, hit my wife over the head with it. <laughs> Thy Word have I hid in my heart that I could be a big shot at work. Thy Word have I hid in my heart so everybody will think that I'm spiritual. No. Thy Word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. That's the reason Amen. for it. Amen. And it helps you to renew your mind. The next thing you need to be uh, vaccinated against is, is just simple immaturity. Immaturity. Uh, look with me, if you will, over to 2 Peter. 2 Peter, chapter number 1. Peter here is telling us in 2 Peter, chapter 1. We'll look at verses 5 through 9, but he's going to give us some things here that we need to add to our faith. We need to add some stuff to our, to our faith. Uh, achieving faith isn't the finish line. Having faith isn't the finish line. You're, you're, not, you're not done uh, just simply because you have faith. Uh, uh, Peter here is telling us, hey, look, uh, it's, it, great, you have faith, that, that's a good starting point. Uh, you, you have to start there, right? Uh, but that's not the finish line, that's the starting line. Okay? And uh, there's a bunch of stuff that you need to add to your faith. He gives us a list of about seven different things here that we need to add to our faith. There's some things that you need to continue to grow. You need to continue to mature. Uh, you need to be inoculated from being immature. Look, you're not supposed to stay a baby forever. Right? Uh, Peter says that as, uh, we're supposed to desire the sincere milk of the Word uh, as newborn babies. Right? But we're not supposed to stay newborn babies. Right? Uh, John's telling us over there in 1 John chapter 2, he starts talking to uh, uh, children, and then young men, and then fathers, right? Because it's a progression. You're supposed to grow. Uh, we, we are supposed to grow in the uh, uh, admonition of the Lord. We're supposed to be growing in this faith that we have. It, it's not just, okay, I just barely got enough, so I can barely hang on. I just barely got on the boat, you know, and I, I you know, I'm good. No, we're supposed to continue to grow. Amen. In, 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 in order to grow, 
You have to be inoculated away from being immature. You, you have to be uh, 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 away from only looking at, at the, the milk of the word. And you need to get into some of the meat. Now, you don't want to be occupied by meats, amen? Uh, you, you don't want to get into all the deep, dark things where you, all you're doing is sitting in a closed room all day, every day, and studying the word of God, and it's not doing anything for you, and you're not doing anything for anybody else. Amen. That wouldn't be right. We're not supposed to do that. But we are supposed to grow. And there's some things that we're supposed to add to our faith. Uh, we have here in 1 Peter, 2 Peter, I'm sorry, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 5. He said, beside this, giving all diligence. So this isn't just some uh, uh, sidebar thing, not just like, well, it's not really all that important, but if you get a chance, you might want to add these things. You know, he says giving all diligence. You know, that, that put all your effort into this. This is important. Don't miss this. This is crucial. This is crucial for your maturity in your spiritual life. This is crucial for you to mature in your relationship with the Lord. It's crucial. Beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue and a virtue knowledge and a knowledge temperance, and a temperance patience, and a patience godliness, and a godliness brotherly kindness, and a brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, Peter is telling you here, if you refuse to mature in the Lord, then you're going to be unfruitful. You're going to be useless in the service of the Lord if you refuse to mature. And if you refuse to grow up, if you just want to stay like that baby forever, it might, might seem like a good thing. Look, doesn't have to do anything for himself. Right? Everybody does everything for him. You know, he wants to go across the room, somebody pick him up and take him across the room. He, he needs to eat, somebody shoves something in his mouth, although I would say, I've seen some of the stuff they shove in his mouth and I'm not for it. <laughs> Most disgusting to me. His mother won't eat green beans, but she makes him eat this stuff that's like worse, much worse than green beans. But anyway, he doesn't have to do anything for himself. That's the best of life. Everybody just serves me and waits on me. Is all I got to do is scream my head off and somebody comes running. What do you need? Start shoving stuff in his face, you know, a pacifier, no bottle, no food, whatever it is. Oh, okay, you've had too much stuff shoved in your mouth. You need the other one needs to be taken. Whatever it is, right? You're not supposed to stay like that, though. Right? Uh, the, the, the Lord doesn't want you to stay a baby. He, he doesn't want to have to continue to do everything for you for the rest of your life. Right? He wants you to grow. He wants to grow. Uh, wants you to grow in virtue. Uh, 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 that, that that's that's uh, that, that, that's like moral uprightness, right? Uh, you need to grow from the way that you used to be. You, you need to actually have some virtue about you now. Okay, uh, you're a child of the King. You represent the King. We're ambassadors of Christ. Uh, we, we should demonstrate that with the way that we live our lives. Uh, you're supposed to add knowledge. Uh, and, and, and we're supposed to be adding to his knowledge. Don't lean on your own understanding. Well, we don't lean on what it is that, that we know and, and what we think, but, but we want to lean on the knowledge of the Lord. Where do you get the knowledge of the Lord? Again, out of his book. He's given it to us in our language, and we can have it. We can read it. We can study it. We can memorize it, and we ought to. Then we can have the knowledge of God. Uh, the next thing he says is, is uh, add temperance. Uh, add some self-control. Okay, uh, like I said before, you are in control. Uh, the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. You are in control of those things. You're not just along for the ride. You got decisions to make. You need to make those decisions. You need to grow in these things. You need to grow in in your relationship with the Lord. Uh, uh, the next thing, uh, look at me over in Romans chapter five. Romans in chapter number five. And uh, the next thing that he says that you need to you need to add to your faith is you need to add some patience. Now, now notice that patience comes after temperance. There's a reason for that, I believe, uh, because because uh, in your natural state, your body, your mind, uh, you you don't want to have patience. 
You don't want to be patient about anything, much less what he's getting ready to tell you that you need to be patient in. You don't want to be patient in anything. Uh, people, we're the most impatient people uh, probably have ever walked the earth. People get people get upset. They got to be in the drive-through for more than three minutes. You know, uh, it take you a lot longer to prepare that meal yourself. You know, I've said it before. You know, I mean, that, it's hard to even get a head of lettuce anymore. You know, because they they got you know twenty-eight feet of the space is filled up with prepackaged uh, salads or something. You don't have to make your own salad. Just pop off the top and dump it in the bowl. But we're impatient. We don't want to wait for anything. Uh, we don't want to wait, you know, uh, for anything that the Lord, the, the Lord's going to do in your life. You don't want to wait for that. You, you want immediate gratification. You want it right now, right? Uh, you want what you want. You want it now. Don't want to wait for it. Uh, uh, you're going through some kind of trial or some kind of struggle or some kind of uh, thing like that in your life, and, and you want it over now. You don't want to have to go through it. You don't. You don't want to have to be able to say, "Well, okay, well, I can praise the Lord because you know I made it through, and, and He worked this in my life." You know, you know, we would just rather just not even go through it at all. We'd just rather be okay. I'll skip. I'll skip that. Where's the fast pass? <laughs> right? I'll take the fast pass right through that. No, no, you won't. Uh, Romans chapter five, verses one through five. Apostle Paul says, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. It's the only way to have peace with God is through the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And we're justified by our faith. Our faith in what the Lord Jesus Christ did for us. Verse 2, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also. Knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. He says that we are supposed to uh, go through tribulations with patience, and we're actually supposed to glory in them, not for them. But we don't glory because of them. Uh, but as we're going through them, we are supposed to uh, go through them with patience. We need to have, have have patience to go through the things that the Lord would would, would have us to go through, and and, and the things that are going to help us to be better witnesses to other people. Look, if you never go through anything, you're going to have a hard time relating to people who do. And, uh, and and things like that. So so sometimes the Lord just lets you go through some things so that you, it'll give you an opportunity that you can be a blessing to somebody else, and uh, it, it could be for God's glory. Uh, maybe He's letting you go through something so that you can learn something yourself. Uh, but the, the the issue is that even though you're going through those times of struggle and, and, and sufferings and, and all those things, you can go through them with some joy in your heart. And that's only if you if you add patience to your faith. If you never bother to add the patience, if you decide, well, I don't have patience and I don't want patience and I don't want anything to do with that, then you're never going to be able to, you're never going to be able to get to that place. You have to add patience to your faith. Next, he says, uh, add godliness. Of course, you know that you want to you want to be God fearing and and, and, and godly in the, in the things that you you, you want to, to have a life that's pleasing to Him. Uh, brotherly kindness. Uh, look with me in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Uh, we're supposed to add brotherly kindness to our faith. And you know, it's not natural for us just to be kind to one another. You, you might be thinking, well, for me it is. Maybe it's not for you. Uh, it's definitely not for me. But it's really not for anybody. Well, we're not naturally kind to, to other people. Uh, most people are kind of people because they think they're going to get something out of it. They're going to get a benefit from, from it or something like that. But we, we are supposed to have a brotherly kindness towards towards those of of, of, of our faith, those who are in the, in the family, uh, those who are, are born again. We're supposed to prefer the brethren. We're, we're supposed to have brotherly kindness uh, toward them. Look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 5 verses 14 and, and 15. It says, Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men, see that none render evil for evil unto any man, 
But ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. He, he said, look, this brotherly kindness uh, uh, that you're supposed to demonstrate is not just for believers. Uh, you're supposed to demonstrate bro brotherly kindness towards everyone. Uh, but one of the things that the Lord said that, that we would be known for, one of the things that we ought to be known for, is our love for the brethren. Over in John, in chapter number 13, verses 34 and 35, the Lord says, A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have love one to another. Uh, we're, we are supposed to demonstrate love to one another. We're supposed to be kind uh, to people. We're, we're supposed to be looking out for their best interest. And uh, uh, we're supposed to look out for the interests of others over our own interests. Over there in Ephesians chapter 4, you know, Apostle Paul gives us a bunch of a list of bunch of stuff, right? You used to do this, now you need to do that. Stop doing this and start doing that. One of the things he says is him that stole, steal no more, uh, but rather work. Uh, uh, but why? Not, not work so you can provide for yourself and for your family and, and for your kin, but, but he, he, he said work that you can provide for other people. Uh, because we're, we're supposed to be... Uh, we're supposed to add brotherly kindness to our faith, and we're supposed to look out for, for the benefits of others, e even above ourselves. Uh, along with that, another thing he said that you need to add to your faith here is, is you need to add charity. You need to add charity. Uh, look over in Colossians in chapter number 3. Uh, uh, Colossians chapter 3 goes along with that thought. Uh, we, we, charity is thinking favorably uh, upon others. And, and that's what we need to do. It, it, charity isn't just a, oh, that means I need to give money to the Salvation Army or, or to the Red Cross or, or what have you. They, they call themselves charities, although I, I would say if you, if, if you looked into their financials, you might find out they're a little less charitable than they claim. But, uh, but that's not what's being talked about here anyhow. Uh, Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 through 15 here. Paul says, Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, Holy and beloved bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity, which is in the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. He, he says here, if you don't add charity to your faith, then you're going to have a really hard time allowing the peace of God to rule and reign in your heart. It's directly related. It's directly related. You, you're not going to be able to, to, to fully experience the peace that you have available. You have a peace of God. We looked over Romans chapter 5. You have the peace of God is available to you, uh, but you have to let it rule and reign in your heart. It's not automatically just going to rule. It is there. It's available. You have it because of the finished work the Lord Jesus Christ did in your place. He's given it to you as a free gift. It's available to you. But if you refuse to add these things to your faith, then you're not going to be able to access it. It's going to be inaccessible to you. You need to be inoculated. From immaturity. Look, your body is going to want to reject these things. Okay? Just like if you get a vaccine, you go to the doctor, they give you a vaccine, and, and your little baby or whatever gets vaccine, and all that stuff. I used to make I used to make Catherine do it with the kids and stuff because that way, uh, you know, when they came home, I could be the hero because I'm not the one that went and let somebody stick it. I was, uh, I played dirty. I played dirty. Uh, but uh, uh, a lot of times they, they would get those shots, right? And, and then they, they, they'd they spike a fever. So because their body is trying to reject that. Their body is like, hey, man, this something's in here. It's not in here. You need to get this out. And, and they're, they're tender, right? Because their body is fighting against it. Your body is going to fight against this. Your, your, body, your, your body doesn't want uh, uh, to be uh, virtuous. and It doesn't want to uh, have temperance and self-control. and It doesn't want to have charity or brotherly kindness and, and, and all these other things that we're talking about here. Your, your body doesn't want those things. The Apostle Paul told you in Romans chapter 7, verse 15 through about verse 25, he says, look, the things that I want to do, I don't do. The things I don't want to do, I keep finding myself doing. Why? Because of this body of sin that I'm in. 
Your body is working against you. It's fighting against you. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to find a bunch of reasons why you should just stay immature. It's a lot easier just to stay immature. A lot easier just to let other people take care of everything around you. And you just kind of sit around and ride around on their coattails. It's a lot easier for you. And uh, it may be a lot easier for you now, but it's not going to be uh, easier for you at the end of the day. At the end of the day, you're called to be mature, not immature. You're called to grow in your faith. Uh, you're not supposed to stay a baby. If you do, then you will, you will be ashamed. You'll be ashamed. If, I, if you don't add these things to your faith, Peter told you right there, if you don't add these things to your faith, you're going to be unfruitful. Right? You're, you're basically going to be useless for the cause of Christ. If you want to, if, if you want to be useful uh, for the Lord, and you want to fulfill His purposes in your life, you have to add these things to your faith. If you don't, then then you're not going to be useful for Him. You're, you're not going to be fruitful. You're not going to bear any fruit. And not only that, but if you look at the next verse or two down through there, that we, we stopped before we got there, but He says if you don't add these things, you're going to get to a place where you can actually forget that you Amen. even had your sins purged. Yeah, that's right. It doesn't say that you're going to lose your salvation. You can't lose your salvation. But He says but you're going to forget it. Yeah, amen. You'll forget. I, I guarantee you. There's Christians all. There's Christians uh, within within a one mile radius of this building right now that used to be involved in church, used to read their Bible, used to pray, used to be Sunday school teachers or deacons or trustees or whatever else, and now they're sitting at home watching the television, or they're out cutting their grass, or they're out jogging, or they're doing some other ridiculous thing. Instead of being in the service of the Lord. Why? Because they refuse to add these things to their faith. And in so doing, they completely forgot. They completely forgot what a big deal it was. It's a big deal. Amen. It's a big deal that you've been made nigh to, to God by the blood of Christ. It's a big deal that you've received a pardon from your sins. It's a big deal that, that you can have the peace of God rule and reign in you. That's a big deal. Amen. But they just forgot because they want to stay immature. They want to stay babies. They didn't want to work at it. They, they, they didn't want to fight their body. They didn't want to make their body do what it didn't want to do. Right? Who, whose body wants to get up early on Sunday mornings? Right? Well, they work hard all week. You know, it's the only day they get to sleep in. No, it's not. No, it's not. No. I never understand people anyway. Operate on next to no sleep because you got to go to work. Gotta go to work. Can't miss work. No matter what, can't miss work. Blizzard, I'll find a way to get there. Uh, Hurricane, I think I can still make it. Got people that, that live an hour and a half or further away from the place where they work. They travel two, three hours every single day back and forth to work. Uh, but the church is, I mean, the church, I mean, it, it's like it's like 15 minutes to get to the church. That's too far. <laughs> Ridiculous. It's the only day I get to sleep in. You, know that? you don't get to sleep in. Not if you're going to add these things to your faith. Not if you're going to have a close and personal and intimate relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't get to sleep in. That's what your body wants. Don't give your body what it wants. Right, the third thing we've already talked about a little bit that you need to be. Uh, fascinated against, and that's impatience. We already talked about the fact you need to add patience to your faith, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. Uh, but but, but we, we need to learn to be more patient. Look with me in 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter number 3. We need, we need to learn to be more patient specifically when it comes to suffering. Specifically when it comes to suffering. We need to learn to be more patient. First Peter chapter three, verses thirteen through eighteen. Here, Peter says, "And who is he that will harm you if you be followers of that which is good?" We're all worried about tribulation and suffering and what so and so going to think or what are they going to do and all that kind of thing. He says, hey, look, what, what can they do to you? How can they harm you if, if, if you're followers of that which is good? If you're followers of the Lord, look, uh, uh, God's on your side. Who cares who's not? Amen. Okay? Uh, but we get all bogged down with that and worried about that and tied up about that. 
But Peter says, Who is he that will harm you if you be followers of that which is good? But, and if you suffer for righteousness' sake, happy are ye. Say, look, if you're doing right and you suffer because of it, be happy. Amen. Because you're doing right. Be happy. Be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. Don't even let that stuff trouble you. Don't give them the satisfaction. Verse 15. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you as of evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. For it is better if the will of God be so that you suffer for well-doing than for evil-doing. For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. Uh, the Lord isn't so much concerned with your comfort. We like to think that he is. <laughs> we like to think that the Lord's all concerned to make sure we're comfortable and we're happy and everything is going great in our lives. Uh, but he's not so much concerned about our comfort. He's more concerned about our character. That's what, he's, that's what he's concerned with. He's concerned with our character. Uh, look, when you're going through suffering, uh, we, we, need, we need to be inoculated from being impatient in suffering. We need to learn to be patient as we go through this suffering. You're going to go through suffering. That's your good news for the day. Amen. You're going to go through suffering. You're not going to get around it. You're going to go through it. Uh, you, you might as well decide to go through it the way the Lord told you to go through it. Go through it with some patience. Go through it with some joy. Uh, uh, Peter says, happy are ye. If you're suffering for doing good, if you're suffering for doing good, there's going to be a reward for that. If you're suffering for doing evil, then that's what you deserve. He says, you're either going to suffer doing good or bad. So if it's the Lord's will that you suffer for doing good, then you need to be willing to go through that suffering. I know it's hard. I know it's painful. That's another thing about, about vaccinations. You know, they stick you in the arm or in the leg or whatever. It hurts. It hurts. It's awful. Hala's 24. She's still deathly afraid of needles. It hurts. Suffering hurts. Tribulation hurts. Don't worry, I'm not going to stick you. It's necessary. It's necessary. Look, don't look, look, don't look for a way to get out of the suffering. Don't always be looking for a way to jump out of the boat. Uh, you know the story back there in Matthew, Matthew chapter 14? Jesus has been preaching. He sent the disciples out of the boat, told them that, you know, go, go across the other side and I'll meet you over there or what have you. They, they never thought to ask him how that was going to work because he didn't have a boat. But, uh, but they're just, okay, you know, okay. They, they jump in the boat and they, they, they start heading over and then what happens? A big storm comes up, right? Um, you know, uh, rains are coming down, the floods are coming up, and the waves are crashing, and all this kind of stuff. These are professional sailors. Don't ever forget that. Most of these guys were professional fishermen. Okay, they spent their lives on in, in these ships, and, and they spent their lives on these bodies of water, all this stuff. This storm was bad enough that they were freaked out. And they, they're just saying, man, we're going down for the count. You know, they're just, just trying to do what they can do and, and, and continuing to struggle through. And sometimes when you're going through suffering and through a trouble and tribulation, that's what it feels like. It feels like you're going down for the count. Right? It is like, this is it, man. This is like the Titanic. You know? And uh, we're getting ready to go down. And, you know, uh, poor Jack wasn't even allowed to get on the door as they were floating around. That's what we feel like. Lord just comes strolling by, walking by the water. So of course they're like freaked out about that. What's going on? Yeah, don't worry, it's just me. But well, what's Peter doing? Peter asked him, "Well, if it's really you, uh, call me out. And let me walk on the water too." And everybody said, "This is awesome. How much faith Peter had? Peter had all this faith and everything that he got out of the boat and he walked on the water, right?" But was that what Peter was supposed to be doing? 
Do you, do you really think the Lord didn't know the storm was coming when he told them to go across? I mean, they are professional fishermen. I'm surprised they didn't know the storm was coming. <laughs> At any rate, he's a creator. He definitely knew Amen. the storm was coming. Uh, he tells you what, where to go and what to do. He knows the storms are going to come. Amen. He knows what you're going to have to go through. Uh, your job is still to go to where you're supposed to go. Peter wanted to get up out of the boat. Right? So the Lord allows him to. Because that, that's what He'll do sometimes for you. Amen. You beg Him enough and you cry about it enough and you fuss and fight and complain and murmur and all that enough, then He'll go, okay, fine. Just like we do with these little kids, right? It's like, you know, no, you can't have that. No, we're not going to do that. No, okay, fine, you win. I'm done. Right? Sometimes that's the way the Lord is with us. But that's not His perfect will. That's not what He wanted for us. That's not what he wanted for Peter. He didn't want Peter to. He didn't want Peter to get out of the boat. But Peter, oh, okay, fine, yeah, come on out here. So Peter gets out. He gets to walk on the water for a few seconds, and then what does he do? He turns his attention away from the Lord and starts looking at the storms again. And then he starts to sink. Now, give Peter props. He knew what to do once he started to sink. He called out to the Lord for help, and the Lord helped him. Amen. But he shouldn't have been out there in the first place. Mm -hmm. And then what did Jesus say to him? Uh, Jesus said, how do you have such little faith? Yeah. And people are always saying, well, that's because he had little faith because he was walking on the water and he started to say, no, he had little faith because he got out of the boat in the first place. He never should have got out of the boat. Go through the suffering that you're supposed to go through with patience. Amen. I know it's going to be painful. Thank you. I know you don't want it. I know that it's not fair most of the time. I know that it's hard to even see the end of the storm. It just seems like this is a never-ending storm, and this is going to be the one that we're going to go down for the count. We're not going to survive. But I'm here to tell you, you will. Amen. You will. But you need to go through it with patience. You need to be vaccinated. And be in patient. When it comes to suffering. When it comes to suffering. Romans chapter 14 and verses 7 through 13 in closing here. Apostle Paul reminds us, for none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. Like, well, what, what, what's the big deal about all these inoculations and these vaccinations anyway? Well, because you don't live to yourself, you don't die to yourself. Verse 8, for whether we live, we live under the Lord. Whether we die, we die under the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ both died and rose and revived, that he might be Lord of the dead and living. But why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set it not thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, Every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. Let us not therefore judge one another anymore, but judge this rather, that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. Look, without these vaccinations, your spiritual life will be hindered. But even worse than that, worse than that, you might infect others. You might infect other people. If you don't do get the vaccinations that the Lord says that you're supposed to get, uh, you are you are uh, flirting with infecting other people. You don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. Get get the uh, vaccinations that the Lord has told you that you need to get. Okay. Thanks for